weapons are cool. Oh, it's scary over there. They're gonna do this. They're gonna do that to you. If you think it is, 90% of the time, see what I'm talking about. 90% of the time, they ain't clean, ain't it? 90% of the time, that's what people do, steer attack. Oh, I ride by there, they try to do this, they try. Now, every, every, every city, every state has this in their neighborhood. Don't judge a book by its cover. It'll be that same person that you pass by 24 seven and will help you put the flat on your bike, help you put food in your mouth. Probably got 50 cents and probably just give you a quarter of that 50 cents. So don't just stereotype. Don't judge a book by its cover. Stop sometimes, help. Indian tribe is the young Navajo. When, it, when the white man came to buy the property from the Navajo Indian, he signed the back of the check and he signed no sellout and ripped the check in half. I, that's what I represent, no sellout, me and my Indian tribe, we're not gonna. But we, we used to do, we started dressing up as Mardi Gras Indians, but that's all we knew how to live like Indians. And the reason why we done that in New Orleans, excuse me, big easy pull for the gun yeah, I'm a chef slash owner slash everything. Oh, <laughs> Made this man. I think people here, what I like about Austin, they're open. You know, Austin is curious. Everybody want to learn everything that they can and they want to know. And then a lot of people not from here. So everybody just curious, where you from? What they do, where you at? You know, and by me being this big chief Darryl Gordon guy, come from Hurricane Katrina and wind up being successful in 10 years and they got people been here their whole life, you know, still having problems accomplishing what I didn't accomplish in 10 years. Because nothing, nothing wasn't given to me. I actually come here probably, well, I come here with nothing. <laughs> no house, no clothes, no money, no nothing. So I had to work and just worked hard and got it in 10 years. <laughs> yeah! Don't forget, nigga, I'm married to the cotton guy. I'm a nigga cotton. Smoking that motherfucker, Mary Jane, nigga. Hey. A lot of these stores you go to today, and I'm sure you probably experienced it, they'll be standing in line and they'll go, next, next. I mean, it's so impersonal, you know? So I always, I, you know, I always say, hey, what's up, you know? Hey, buddy, what's up? How's it going today? You know, I always, have, always make them feel you know, like, like, like you're him. like a little friendship. You know, I mean, I've built a lot of friendships as far as customer relations here, you know, that keeps people coming back. At you. And supposedly they just sold the barbershop behind us, the property to the barbershop, but it's not gonna, they're not planning on doing anything with it for a year or two, it's a hearsay. I'm not really um, up on abreast of what's going on over there but I do know that it has been sold. Any day, any day you can wake up and, and, and breathe fresh air, man, and, and get to see it, the business is good. In the barbershop, you're always gonna have your regulars. They always just come up here just like to be at the barbershop. You know, they come, they like your presence. So, you know, you're gonna always have a regular crowd. It's, always, it's just like with any other pub, you know, or, or bar, or anything, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna always have somebody that's gonna come in just because they like that area, like the barbershop, and they'll just come in you know, and yeah. talk. So, it ain't always about a haircut, it's just about the, you know, you know, yeah, you know, just socialize, you know what I'm saying? So, it's one of those things you can come here and be yourself. possible being is a church of irresistible influence in the middle of a transforming community. So we were able to bring people in and say if you get to become a part of our programs we will have your records expunged and the DA's office actually worked with us on that. And so these are formerly people that were doing working the street that are now trying to live a productive life back in community. Sam is one of those guys that you guys met him. 
I can give you the punny version. I was born in the Constitution State. I moved to the Lobster State. When I figured out I was Texan, I moved to the Lone Star State. I have a, a few different uh, uh, things. I got the garden, and I do uh, breeding of the Rosa Sharon plant, which is a biblical plant mentioned in Song of Solomon 2 1, where it says, I am, capital, the Rosa Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. Um, they all know me by name. Uh, they all know what I do, and they know how I do things. They know about the greenhouse, and they know, you know, they try to game me uh, some some years. And you know, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, I've had numerous laptops taken, cameras taken, all this, including recently. But you know what? I don't lay it to their charge. I may have gotten angry briefly, but you know that passes. My God is bigger than that. There was one year where somebody uh, poisoned uh, all of my Rosa Sharon's with, with a, uh, a glypophosphate product, like Roundup. And I watched uh, all these, all these uh, breeder plants uh, basically start to wither and die. I had to hand process every plant, take them out of their pots wash the roots off and treat them with hormones, organic hormones, uh, and uh, eight of them perished out of the 15. I was able to save uh, a little group of them. Put a lot of stop to a lot of shit that's happened around here, man. A lot. People would pull up to the store mm -hmm. and drug dealers would be coming between the cars, hand drugs and money. And I put a whole stop to it. And I've almost gone to jail three times jumping out this window, whipping their asses. <laughs> I've had the cops come say, Robert, you know, you're a good guy. We don't want to throw you in jail over crackhead, but you can't just jump out and kick the shit out of them, okay? I said, well, I got to make my presence known. Ten years from now, you will not recognize this part of the town. Uh, this will be a place where every house here is worth in excess of a million dollars in ten years. The development is just now rolling. So I'm fortunate to be here to see uh, the, the great turnaround and uh, to see the transition that the neighborhood making because it's, it's, it's working out for us for, for, for the business. For us, for me, it's going to work out because it's bringing more money to the neighborhood so that make more money for the business. Uh, the highlights of my experience here on the corner has been one of tremendous love. And I have people who hate me, I have people who love me, but I love them in spite of their hate. Because the Bible says, he that hateth his brother is a murderer. 1 John 3.15. How am I going to how am I gonna see somebody who doesn't know Christ and say, well, God hates you? How am I going to say that? I can't. I can't do that. Because while I was in my lifestyle, the Lord showed me mercy rather than judgment. It ain't what you do, it's how you do it. You know what I mean? That's the only thing. So if you approach somebody wrong, that's how it's gonna come out. You know what I mean? So that's the only thing about it. You know, just paint the picture the wrong way and just people having good days and bad days. That's how I look at it. <laughs>